In this video, we're going to build a custom hotspot interaction that includes audio on each of the hotspot clicks. I'm Paul Wilson, and I make videos about e-learning, specifically the authoring tool Adobe Captivate. If you like what I'm doing here today, by all means, subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share it with all of your e-learning buddies. A viewer of my YouTube channel commented uh, on one of my videos asking about specifically hotspots and would it be possible to create a hotspot, a custom solution perhaps, that also included audio each time you clicked on one of those hotspots. They struggled with it for a while, but eventually decided to reach out and ask me if I could help. And I think I've got a pretty good solution here with the help of one of my other e-learning colleagues, Anastasia. Let's take a look. Okay, so I have a project that's uh, open here and I wish to add a custom hotspot interaction. And to do that, we need to take advantage of the software simulation feature to capture a slide where we can literally place objects anywhere on that slide. Different components normally are fixed based on the block that you're adding to a Captivate slide. Like for example, this title will always be in this position. I can't really grab it and move it anywhere. So we're gonna need software simulation slides for this little trick to work. I should give credit where credit is due. I first learned about this from my colleague Anastasia, who's also one of the other trainers of the Adobe certification program. She shared this solution with me much earlier. And when I saw the comments on my YouTube channel, I thought, ah, here's an example where we could use that particular feature or workaround, really. I don't know if that Adobe really planned for us to do this but let's do it anyway. My trick is to use a Chrome browser window and go to howbigismybrowser.com and choose 1366 by 768. There we go. To ensure that this window I capture is exactly the size of my project because if you take a look here, my project dimensions are 1366 by 768. It's still responsive design, so it could literally be up to full screen on someone's monitor or it could be on a mobile phone, whatever. But our, our starting point is this 1366 by 768. So let's go back to Captivate for a moment here. I'm going to click on the capture icon, select a new software simulation, and the capture window showed up in my other monitor here. And instead of choosing a custom size, because for whatever reason, this doesn't seem to line up the way I would expect it to, I'm going to go to Application Window, and I'm going to choose Google Chrome. And while Google Chrome is selected, I don't really want to select this top area here because 1366 by 768 is just the yellow area. So I'm gonna choose size and select app region and click in this yellow area. And now you'll see the only thing I'm capturing is the stuff on the browser screen here. No narration, even though I possibly might be adding narration later. I don't want to record it now. And I want to turn off automatic panning because I want to say stay locked in on this particular viewport in the browser here. We're going to choose training and we'll click on record. You'll get the usual countdown. And you might hear the camera click. I'm not sure if it was captured in the recording just now. You'll see the recording pod. In this case, you might not see it, but I'm seeing it right in the middle of my screen here. And I can just press the stop button whenever I'm ready to return to my project here. So here you can see it clearly captured the 1366 by 768 very precisely. Let's go into the visual properties inspector. First thing you can do is you can change the appearance. So we obviously don't need this image in our background or any other image that you might have captured. 
So you can choose either a solid fill, it maybe it's just a plain white slide, one of the two different types of gradients if necessary, or we can choose an image and we can select that image, whether it's on your system or maybe it's something from the assets library. In this example here, let's just choose this office environment. I think that would probably be appropriate here. So that looks good. So we can start adding the objects that we're going to need for this hotspot interaction. First thing we're gonna need is a button. If you wanted your hotspot buttons to be invisible, you could use a click box instead. And I will just grab this button. And this is again, the benefit of using software simulation in this way is that you can place these objects anywhere on the slide that's appropriate for this particular interaction here. I don't need a border in this case here. I don't even need text, so I'm gonna turn that off. And instead I'm gonna add an icon and we can select an icon from our assets library or from your system if you already have a hotspot icon that you'd like to use. Let's take a look at what my options are here. Actually, I kind of like this, this is kind of cool. Let's replace the icon with that. And we're gonna make it a large icon. And obviously we would like it to contrast that background color. So we'll just make it white like so. And it's obviously not very rounded, so let's resize that a little bit there, okay? I'm gonna need uh, three more of these for this particular interaction. So I'll place the first one where I think I'm gonna want it here. And let's go back to clicking on somewhere on the slide here and we can add three more buttons and I'll just spend a moment configuring those so that they look like the first one that we just created. Okay, so there's our icons and we want to, or hotspots if you will, let's place them on the slide roughly where we think that they should go. Again, I'm just making this stuff up as I go along here. So that looks good to me. One of the things to keep in mind is that this is still responsive design. So if I'm viewing this on a tablet or a smartphone, what you'll end up with is the ability to scroll left and right to see all of these. So, you know, if the background is there purely for aesthetic reasons, maybe you might want to stack all your hotspots over here. But if it is for a specific purpose, you'll want to instruct your learners to use that scroll functionality here. But let's just focus on this now. Now what I need are four instruction boxes. And I'll create one here, and I'll put the text in that's appropriate for maybe this first item here. And again, just like the buttons, we can move this to a position that's appropriate here. I'm gonna try something cool and just get the hotspot in the upper left corner there. We can click into our slide and add three more instruction boxes here. And I'll just move those aside for a second and I'll just copy my text and place it into this instruction set here. And again, I'm just gonna position it so it's just sort of behind the hotspot there. You'll see what I'm going for in a moment there, I think. And I'll get the third example of some text here. And we'll paste that in there. And I'll also position it like so. And our fourth example here, we'll paste that in there. And maybe for this one, because we're so close to the edge, I'll have it show up on the left side of the hotspot here. What I'm doing is I want to sort of keep the hotspot in the corner of these instruction boxes. And if I go into my timeline and just resize this a little bit here, rather than the instructions being on top, we can move the buttons to be on top here. The order that you see here are the buttons. So we'll just place all of our buttons so that they are on top of these instruction boxes there. 
Now, when we arrive on the slide, I don't want them, the students to see these instruction boxes. So one by one, I'm going to select those and I'm going to click on the hide during publish icon in the upper right hand corner of my visual properties inspector for those. So that when we first arrive on the slide, those won't be seen. The only thing they'll see are the hot spots there. Let's do that. And it's just occurred to me there's a very good possibility that this is going to be some kind of forced navigation where for the student to move forward, they must click on all four hotspots. So to do that, a couple of things I could do here. One of the things I would likely do is not show the play bar for this project. First of all, let's click our slide here. Go back to Visual Properties, and I'm going to add one more button here, and this will be roughly centered. Unfortunately, there are no alignment tools uh, available, so you'll have to kind of guess, best guess here, and we'll just relabel that next. Okay, let's start with our first hotspot here and start to write the interactions or advanced actions, if you will, for this interaction here. So I'm going to click on the interactions icon in the right hand toolbar for the first one there. And what do we want to do? Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to hide all of those instructions once more. The reason being is that this may not be the first one I'm clicking on. It might be the second or third. So we want to make sure that everything is not visible when I click on these. And it's real simple to do. We just click on hide and we simply select our instruction items right here. Okay, go next and done. Okay, now we're clicking the first one. So I want to show the first instruction set. So we'll click on add new action. We'll go show and this is instruction set number one here, even though we're not really using it as instructions and click done. Now, if there's slide audio playing, you would want to stop the slide audio because we're going to add our own narration to each of these hotspots. So the easiest way that I know how to do that in Captivate 12 is under the more option for our advanced interaction here. And we're going to pause our timeline. Pausing the timeline works a little bit differently in class and Captivate. It doesn't pause the audio, but in 12 it does. And so that has the effect of making sure that you don't have any crosstalk uh, with two different audio clips playing at the same time. So I'll select pause timeline there and click done. Now, in case we've clicked one of these other hotspots and we're prematurely pressing another hotspot, we also want to stop any triggered audio as well. So we're going to click on the add new action icon and we'll click on more and we'll stop media from playing and click done. And last but not least, we want to play the audio for this particular hotspot item. So we'll click on add new action. I've pre-recorded these using the new AI voice feature in Adobe Captivate 12 and I exported those audio clips and they're just sitting on my desktop right now. So I'm going to click on more and I'm going to play media. We'll click on browse and we'll go to my desktop and we'll see text to audio one, two, three, and four. I'll choose one in this case here and we'll click on open. Okay. And press done. One of the things that you can do with all of these actions, I'm not sure what the threshold is, but they will run one action after the other. And uh, at some point you'll notice the delay between actions. So one of the things that you can do is you can select the first action, hold down your shift key and select the last action to make sure that all your actions are selected and then press the merge icon here. And this has the effect of having them run all at the same time. I may not need it in this case, but I think it's a good best practice when you want to have things happen seemingly all at once there. Now I have three more hotspots I need to create similar sets of interactions for. The easiest way that I know how to do this is to right click on my first hotspot, copy interactions, 
and we'll select the second hotspot and I'll right click and paste those interactions and in. so the same set of actions and all I need to do now is show a different instruction item and play a different audio item. So let's edit this. We'll click on the edit action and rather than the target being instructions underscore one, we're going to change that to instructions underscore two. Make sure you unselect instructions one first and then select instructions two. Scroll down, press next and done. We also need to play a different clip. So we're going to click on the edit action icon and we will click on the target and edit that action and browse to a new audio clip, in this case, audio number two. Okay, and click done. I'm gonna repeat that for hotspot two and three and we'll fast forward through that so you don't have to watch that whole process a bunch of times here, but essentially it's the same process. So hold tight one second and I'll take care of that. So I've copied the interaction actions to the remaining two hotspots there and made the modifications so that we're showing the appropriate instructions and playing the appropriate audio as well. So I think we're pretty much good to go. One thing that you may want to consider doing is if you want to hide your next button until they've clicked on all four of these, we can select the next button go to our visual properties inspector here and make sure that that's hidden during publish. I'll do that now. And then we'll go back to interactions here. Let's click outside of the slide so nothing is selected and we'll add an interaction. We'll select objects clicked and select all of our hotspots. So once the student has selected all of the hotspots, we're going to show our next button, press next and done. So I think we're good to test this out right now. Let's do a preview of this project and hopefully it works as we expect it to. Okay, so here's our slide with our four hotspots here. If I click the first one, we see. Understand your strengths, values, beliefs, and habits. Self-awareness is the foundation of meaningful growth. Yeah, and we'll see in here the uh, instruction item that appears. Let's click the next one. Define what you want to achieve. Set SMART goals to guide your progress. Identify the skills you need to develop and take deliberate action to improve them. And our final hotspot, which should reveal our next button. Regularly review your progress, learn from setbacks, and make adjustments as needed. So it's good to preview your work. I, obviously, I think I would reposition these hotspots so that they don't cover up any of the other instructions. But, you know, hey, I think this works fairly well. I need to move my next button a little to the left, but the students, of course, could still get through this, press the next button, and head to the next slide. When you're on um, different views like this, uh, you'll have, of course, the opportunity to scroll left and right. If you're doing it on a mobile phone, same idea. Uh, you'll see some white space at the bottom here, but you'll definitely be able to move around and hit the different hotspots as you need to. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.